Hey there YouTube, it's Nick with Feeding Fitness. Um, I haven't done an informative video in a while, I'm going to do this one today. Um, it's on a topic some people have been asking me about. Uh, this topic is going to be metabolic damage and reverse dieting. What do I think about it? It's quite a controversial topic. Uh, I'm going to give you my opinion, um, which is largely based on fact, uh, as it normally is. So, let's start off and talk about what do we mean by metabolic damage. Um, I don't even care for the terms how much I disagree with the idea of metabolic damage. Um, people are calling metabolic damage something that happens from pro uh, prolonged dieting where your metabolism slows and slows and slows to a point where it is damaged and that it's hard for you to get back to maintenance and hard for you to eat more calories because you have somehow damaged your metabolism. Um, I do not agree that this really even exists in the way that it's being presented. Um, I prefer to use the term metabolic adaptation, which I'll define separately as a condition that happens to everybody who diets, where you will have your metabolism slow a little below what it normally is when you're eating in, at maintenance or in a surplus, um, but nothing to a great degree, maybe 10-15% uh, slow down total, um, you know, in, in the throes of a very long, low-calorie diet. Um, that's what I, in my experience, have seen and what's kind of backed by um, factual research. This metabolic damage, um, I just don't feel there's any concrete research um, proving that this actually exists. So, uh, and how does this go along with reverse dieting? So what is a reverse diet? Reverse diet is what somebody does when they've finished a cutting session. This is usually um, competent. Well, it used to just be people in competitions, bodybuilding competitions, where they're going to shed so much body fat that they are in the lowest of the lows that the human body can handle, and that they are going to slowly re-add calories into their diet to, um, in an attempt to reverse their metabolic damage and uh, get them back to a maintenance or even beyond what their previous maintenance was. Um, and the idea is that you slowly add in calories, something um, to maybe even only adding 10 carbs a week, which is only 40 calories, and then you just slowly and slowly build back up. And the idea is that this gradual buildup allows you to achieve maintenance without gaining um, all sorts of fat because of your damaged metabolism, and to actually rehabilitate that metabolism to the point where you're going beyond what your maintenance used to be. Um, I call bullshit on the entire goddamn thing, and I'm gonna get into why. First of all, all right, why does it appear that reverse dieting fixes a condition that I don't even think exists? Water retention, water retention, water retention, water retention. It fools everything, everything. Now, if you're a competition bodybuilder, somebody who's getting to single digit body fat, please go ahead and accept that you are already at least a slightly neurotic person, if not an extremely neurotic person. And I've been neurotic with my dieting as well. Not to the point of eating disorder, but some people are actually in that category as well. To where your brain is not perceiving everything that's going on. You get stuck on the scale number and making yourself lose weight and you get worried when the scale goes up because you're gaining fat. Here's what I think is happening. Is people are getting to incredibly low body fat. And the lower your body fat gets, the more these water weight swings are going to make huge differences, not just on the scale, but on your visual appearance of leanness. That being said, you get through your competition, and what a lot of bodybuilders do will binge shortly after their competition, and they will gain 5, 10, 15 pounds in the matter of a couple of days. Now, normally this is not all fat, this is mostly water, because even in the throes of a diet, if we're going to agree that your metabolism isn't actually damaged, because there's really no research to support that, um, you still have to eat incredible amounts over maintenance, you know, 35,000 calories over maintenance, even if it's a smaller maintenance, to gain 10 pounds of fat. So let's reject the idea that most people are gaining 10 pounds of fat in the course of a week. Now, some people, if they've really dieted hardcore and they lose control, could conceivably eat that much, but I feel that is the exception, not the norm. So, why are these people gaining all this weight? It's water weight. They've been on sodium restrictions. Some of them have even been on water restrictions, and now they're binging. So, of course, they're seeing huge jumps on the scale, and that's going to visually puff you up and make you look fat. but it's not all fat gain. So, what does the reverse dieting do? It says, hey, the show's over, 
but now we're just going to slowly but surely introduce a little bit of calories every week. Well, here's the thing. If you're in a deficit of, say, maybe 500 calories uh, and you're adding back like 40 calories a week, you're still in a deficit. All this time after the show when you're supposedly going to be transitioning back into a ball, you're still in the deficit. You're only adding 40 calories. It's going to take you over 10 weeks to get 400 calories and you might still be in a deficit if you were in a 500 calorie deficit to begin with. So, of course you're not going to gain tons and tons of weight on the scale because you're still probably losing fat. This is not what you want to be doing. This is slowing down, getting back to where you can bulk again. Now, I'm not saying day after a show, you add 500 to your calories and, and jump on board, but 40 calories a week, that's asinine. I would, if you are in a perceived 500 calorie deficit, I might add 250 the first week, so you are still in a deficit, and then add another 250 so you're at maintenance, do that for maybe two weeks, and then bam, start slowly adding calories for the bulk. That's where you want to add the calories extra slow as you get into the bulk to figure out how much you need to make sure your weight is gaining um, at an appropriate speed. Spend that time adding slowly because at least you're still in a surplus and you're still gaining your muscle. Don't drag out this reverse dieting period um, to just basically lengthen your cut when you don't need to cut anymore and reduce the amount of time you can spend bulking. Um, so that is one of the reasons. It's just the, the water manipulations just start there when you're creeping up your calories and you are still in a deficit so you're not seeing all this gain but it's not fat gain anyways it's water so all you're doing is you're wasting weeks and weeks and weeks you could be bulking and gaining more muscle to trick yourself into thinking you're not gaining fat even though you weren't in the first place you're just curing your own neurosis by prolonging a period of time that does not need to be prolonged now, if you really buy into the theory of metabolic damage, this all seems to make a lot more sense to you. Uh, you have to prolong it because you're repairing the damage. I just don't feel like that damage exists, and I'm sorry, I don't. I probably spent well over a year in a calorie deficit, sometimes an extreme deficit, as I went from morbid obesity to a proper height and weight. Was there any damage to metabolism? No. Reverse dieting, I just don't think it's supported. Metabolic damage, I just don't. I need to see research data showing it's true. Some of our best studies do not support metabolic damage. Um, the Minnesota starvation um, study is a great example. Uh, none of these people came out of this study with damaged metabolism. They all binged and gained their weight back, but after enough time went by, they went back to normal. There are plenty examples of people who have battled through eating disorders and made full recovery and their metabolism isn't damaged and there's just no proof to show that it is. A lot of this comes from disordered thinking, neurosis, things that extreme dieters are all guilty of and I myself have been guilty of. You'll find that the longer and longer you do things like diet down and bulk up and the more these cycles you complete, the less neurotic you become because you just learn to trust in the system. I'm far, not, far less neurotic than I used to be because I know the system works and I know how it works and I know there will be stalls and I know it's water retention related and that's just how it goes. So again, in summary, I do not support metabolic damage. Just don't, I, I need, somebody needs to show me cold hard facts, not hundreds of emails, and they just need to show me evidence that it exists and evidence that reverse dieting fixes it, and that's just not there. So I say no to metabolic damage, I say no to reverse dieting. I'm very much of the opinion that you should come out of a cut uh, with a couple weeks to get yourself back up to maintenance. That's it, because any extending of that period of time is not helping you. I don't think that's doing you any good. It might be helping you up here, but it's not helping this. So um, just say no to your neurosis, try to fight back against that, and know that the scale is fucking with you. It's not that bad, all right? So that's my opinion on this. Um, a friend of mine on Facebook who is actually a um, diet coach, if you are looking to get lean, he can help you. Uh, he has got a great list of um, 
studies and review of the topic of metabolic damage. If you want to delve more into the science side of it, because I didn't really tap into that much, I really encourage you read this post, read the things that are linked in this post. Um, it's going to be down in the description below. Check it out. And um, that's got a lot of information. It's going to go into a lot more detail. I didn't want to make this video 20 minutes long, so I didn't get into the science side of it so much. Uh, but if you want that, please read. Um, so that's what I have to say about this topic. Give the video a thumbs up if you like it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Questions, comments down below or over at Facebook at facebook.com upslash fitness. And I'll see you guys next time.